Hey everybody, on this rainy Wednesday, we're going from Bonnaroo to base. How about that? So this is Taylor Brown, the principal double base for the CSO. Is that right? Did I get it good? That's my title. Okay. He's earned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's exciting. We haven't had yeah. anyone from the symphony yet. I know. And we've been listening to him do a sound check for a little bit now. Thank you for sitting through that. And the tunes are uh, menacing and moody. Yeah. We're going to get him to uh, play. You've got a show this weekend. We'll talk about that. Yeah. And we'll play some excerpts from that, but also just kind of show us what the thing will do. And I think, yeah, this needs an introduction. Am I, am I allowed to touch her? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's not okay. mine. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so she doesn't have a name, but she's, she's a gorgeous, gorgeous lady. Yeah, you said she has some nice hips, right? Yeah. Nice she's hip. got full cute figures. hips. Let's see full how figured. they can move. Yeah, play. <laughs> Yeah, yes, very, different. very different. Very uh, yeah. different. Where do you want to start? We want to talk about this weekend. You want to talk about the instrument? You, we'll start there. So you, much to talk about. You were telling me this is not your symphony, right? So this is not my instrument. I borrowed this instrument for this weekend. Um, the bass. It's most of the time we spend our life and living down here in the low register, like you said, menacing sounds. We do the, you know, the the jaws. That's where we make our money all day. Mm -hmm. But to play soloistically on the instrument, we spend our time up here, like you saw. It's, so it's way different. Um, so I borrowed this little instrument from my friends, uh, the Shanks uh, in Pennsylvania. And it helps project it through the orchestra, because this sound doesn't really cut, but this stuff does. Now, my orchestra instrument is much bigger, and much bigger shoulders, and so getting around it easily just doesn't really happen. So that's why I borrowed this little guy. And you were telling me, because I was asking, I honestly don't know what a double bass is, but you're saying that was just, that's the name for it, it's right? Just, it's it's just a name. It's the same thing bluegrass bands use. It's the same thing as jazz bands use, folk, orchestras. It's just the big uh, string instrument. The double refers to the, the tuning uh, and the pitch range, but that's like way too technical to get into. It's the same thing that your, you know, cousin has down the street. It's mm -hmm. all the same. Sure, everybody yeah. has a cousin. It's this good. <laughs> uh, can you give us a preview, and we'll talk about this weekend after? Can you give us a little preview of what people could hear this weekend? Sure. So that first thing I played was the opening of the first movement. That'll probably be the first thing you hear out of me this weekend. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so kind of the virtuosic technical stuff, uh, but it also has lyrical aspects. Not everyone really thinks of the bass as a, as a lyrical instrument. Mm -hmm. I'm meaning like really singing voice instead of, right. you know. 
moaning and groaning. Um, so, <laughs> which one do you like better? If you I like, had, you like the moaning and groaning. Yeah, actually, I I, I prefer <laughs> to spend my time playing low notes, really loud, and doing chord changes than doing all this virtuosic stuff. Mm -hmm. So, let's hear some. Well, I'll I'll play some of the lyrical stuff, and then. And then you'll get to what you then like. Then we'll, we'll talk about okay. what I like. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what is that called? So that's the second movement of the Bodicini Concerto. Okay. Um, just, I kind of ended it in a way, found a, a stopping point, but I don't want to give everything in a way. No, uh, no, for never. This yeah. You're, the show is Sunday, mm -hmm. right? Three o'clock? Three o'clock in the Reed House. At the Reed House, which is Silva a Silver Ballroom. That's cool. A neat venue. Yeah, um, it's, it's a different uh, than what you're used to as far as orchestra stuff. It's really intimate. You're really like right on top of the orchestra instead of at a distance, like at the Tivoli or something. Uh, so you can, you can hear us breathe, you can see us make eye contact with each other. It's, it's very, very different and kind of like a laboratory more than a, than a yeah, show. A cool it's the way it was performed. Absolutely, so small repertoire uh, was performed in small rooms. Um, this, my piece was not really an orchestra piece originally, it was for bass and piano. The guy that wrote it, uh, a little bit about the guy that wrote it. His name was Giovanni Bottasini. He was alive in the mid-1800s. Uh, bass player, obviously, <laughs> so he knows the instrument, uh, and was an opera guy. He would play to an opera orchestra that toured. Uh, he was from Italy, moved to Havana, toured the States doing opera. What a life. Yeah, and then he became a conductor, uh, conducted that opera, and also he's most famous for the premiere of Verdi's Aida, big opera that takes place in Africa and Cairo. Right. And so he premiered it. Um, but so his stuff was bass and piano. He kind of just did tricks during the interval. So during intermission, he would play because he was so good. And people were like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And then he'd go back to the pit and do his job. Mm -hmm. So that's how he got famous. Oh, cool. Who is, who is joining you at this the show? Mm -hmm. The orchestra. So I'll be playing as a soloist with the orchestra accompanying me. OK. So the full on in, in mm -hmm. the yeah even more of an but a small show, yeah like a small version of the full orchestra uh, because like I said the instrument doesn't project really well so to take on a, a huge group I probably would get buried gotcha gotcha okay so how many people can can come is it sold out are there still tickets I'm sure there are still tickets I don't know if it's sold or now. Okay. Um, but I think everyone can come yeah, well, we should yeah. find room for people Contact right the room. CSO. You know how to find them. Facebook, internet, all that good stuff. Well, play us um, something you really love, like we talked about. What's something you love to play? Well, it's not particularly interesting to hear by itself, but <laughs> I mean, you, I, I like to just, you know, play low. And this is not the instrument to play low on. It's so mm -hmm. bright. But you, to really see what I love to do, uh, you you, need the big you've got to come to work. you got to come to see the symphony. I will. Um, my... One I'm looking forward to where it's, it's music that I love to play and I'm very passionate about is the Mahler 4 concert later in the season. And Mahler is very important in my life and his music is what I love to play the most. Okay. We had, and you mentioned it earlier, but we had talked about this instrument in particular, that menacing sound, mm -hmm. but it has a big place in cinema. 
obviously. Um, oh, yeah, Barry's all into this. Yeah, well, I'm fascinated by it. Maestro yeah. Bernhardt and I, Robert Bernhardt, and I have talked for years about it. I love people hear these sounds and don't always think that's from Bugs Bunny or, right. or, or some other TV show or movie. Right. They don't always mesh the two, I think. Symphony, uh, there's that perception that it's highbrow and not for everybody, and they don't think that they've heard it on their kids' cartoon oh, yeah, that you, morning. You've heard it, you've heard it your whole life. Yeah. Everybody has heard symphonic music their whole life. Um, I mean, Star Wars is very popular right now. Oh. It's obviously the major you know, work of the orchestra to, to play that music. My son obsessed. But yes. <laughs> play, for example, please, like, there's per certain parts of films where you know something bad is going to happen. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. So I mean, you, it's, I've done some live score, not live scoring, but uh, re studio scoring for stuff. And you'll see in the part, you know, just foreboding is the, the cue we get and things like that. And you just, you have to just sneak in with the. And I, I don't know how many times in film you've heard just that or you felt that. And then yeah. it's. Yeah, your shoulders go up. That's what we do. So. <laughs> Those are the best kind of uh, horror movies, you know, where it's like that slow, the slow kill. <laughs> but some of them overdo it, though. You well, know. you know, yeah. there, um, George S. Clinton, who's a film scorer oh, yeah. uh, from here, was on the board, I think, at the CSO. He, so he did a uh, seminar a couple years ago and had other professionals in. And one of the guys was asked, is it easier to do comedy score or horror score? And I think he said horror was harder because that line mm -hmm. between right. parody, silliness, and really scary, you can go too far. Sure. Just enough. You know, so. Right. Well, when, we, when I've done studio stuff, there's a ton of music in front of you. And mm -hmm. a lot of it ends up on the floor. Right. You, you, they gather all the information they can put something together but it's there's a lot of just checks of let's try making this noise you have like tons of that and then they get a sample of that and they go okay well might use that might not that's yeah. kind of the business talk some more about that you've done not only scores but uh st studio sessions right yes some... a little bit it's I, I i don't do a whole lot of it but I, i've done just a couple things that Secret projects that oh, I'm not supposed to talk about. I but. like well, that. Well, we unfortunately we might have outed you. Stole you. some. We in, in this tomorrow's uh -oh. story. Uh, you've performed with Barry Manilow. Oh, well, and that Earth, was Wind, and Fire. Okay. okay. I, I've I went on tour with Barry Manilow uh, a while ago. I, I can't remember what year it was. Uh, just a small tour to upstate New York in Canada. Um, just, just a small tour, I mean, no big deal. Five days, nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing huge. But he brought. I mean, Manilow puts. On, I'm not a, the greatest fan of Barry Manilow's music. It's not what I prefer to listen to. But he puts on a great live yeah, show. Everyone says that. Yeah. Cool. No yeah, one claims exactly. to like him. No, exactly. But he does. <laughs> but it's a great, a great live show, show, and he, he's very talented. Oh he yeah. Commercial work and and he puts on, you know, to some of these shows he brings a whole orchestra, and it's it's amazing to play for 6,000 people, yeah. you know, and just back that up. And Earth, Wind & Fire was, that is something I really like. And playing with cool. them was phenomenal. Um, and it's the same thing. They put a big orchestra behind them and, you know, they have their, they have an enormous band, amazing band. Um, now, were, were these their shows or were they, these shows where they had joined an orchestra? It, these cases, it was their show. Um, and a friend of the orchestra in the area talked them into using the orchestra, and then Barry Manilow was like, well, let's go and do a whole tour of this. That's cool. Uh, which was awesome. Um, but yeah, sometimes it works either way. Sometimes the orchestra books the artist, and they come in. But this case was the artist looked at an arena, and they brought us in, which was a lot of fun. This back when I lived in Youngstown, Ohio. Yeah. Or I lived in Pittsburgh, but worked in Youngstown. OK. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people, including myself, realize how many musicians and instruments go into every production. So it's it's an interesting world to learn about, for sure. Yeah, a lot of my colleagues, uh, I like to speak more about my colleagues than myself. Uh, I, have, <laughs> so I have people I work with that, that have recorded for Tim McGraw, and, and I can't name all the artists that, that my colleagues have worked with, but the guys that live in Nashville more, 
have you've you've heard them yeah, most likely that's cool. whether you know it or not it really adds to that I always call those like the almost famous people, which sure. is a good place to be, honestly. It's a good living. Yeah. Well, it was, uh, then there are documentary out now. What is it? Five Feet from Fame or something about yeah. the... Yeah. Um, uh, and The Wrecking Crew is a documentary. Oh, that yeah. was amazing. Yeah, really good. That's that amazing. The Wrecking Crew. That produced it was here a couple of years ago. Hmm. Um, Another person we need to get a hold of. It, the bass player, and I never can remember her name. Carol but that's how Kay. they want it. Carol Kay. Yeah. Carol Kay. Talk what about you've heard her and you don't know it. Oh, yeah. You kind of yeah. sat on every hit record yeah. for 40, cool. 50 years. So. Very cool. All right, let's play some more. I know that's what people want. All right, just a little bit more from me. look and sound easier than it is Thank you. Yeah, yeah so you guys need to come experience this and you might still be able to this sunday three o'clock silver ballroom of the yeah, red house it, it, there should be tickets available that would be awesome uh, to imagine being in that kind of element with this sound and the orchestra so that'd be really cool and i'm certainly cool to do. well out of my comfort zone doing this <laughs> stuff um I, like i said I like you're to play good well, so. he's you. super modest you never know what you're going to get with some of our musicians. That's All the idea. That is, I'm so here. excited you're here. That's yeah. fun. Well, if anyone does come, I can go ahead and give you the, the two best compliments to give a bass player. Okay. Uh, I, I personally love backhanded compliments. <laughs> and Who doesn't? You, you reminded me of this by, oh, by saying, uh, wow, that looks hard. It does. That's, that's, that's oh, the best compliment. That's hilarious. And okay. then uh, my favorite is your bass sounds great. <laughs> So I, please, I mean, if you do come, then it will make me laugh to hear you say hard. that. That sounds hard. We'll know they watch this. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. I love when musicians give us these little little uh, trinkets into into their world. There's yeah. some like I hear that are just too too X-rated <laughs> to share, but yeah. I have those. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They're fun, right? Yeah. This is a nice change of pace. We're having this strange music day from Bonnaroo, the lineup announcement this morning. We're here bright and early. Go back on the Facebook page for that to this. And then we may be going to check out some super cool rare guitars that are being moved into the Guitar Museum. Songbirds here later this afternoon. If that goes down, we're on standby. So a lot full happening of in different town. stuff A lot of cool today. stuff. Yeah. Taylor, anything we didn't ask you about? Um, not that I want to tell you about. How's that? <laughs> that's, that's a fair answer. It's a good. That's a practice answer. Yeah, he's a hard. He'd be a hard, hard interview. It's a good skill to have. Thank you. Yes. Thank you it's so hard. much. Thank you. Yeah. Difficulty is what I go for in life. <laughs> Guess we all could take a page out of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This was a pleasure. It was definitely different for us, which is always cool. Different is always cool. So remember that, guys, and we'll see you later on. I think we have to go play some basketball. Yeah, we got our globe trotter coming. Such an odd day, in. globe trotter. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> it's a weird Wednesday. It's good. It's fun. Okay, fun. Okay, bye, you guys. <laughs>